What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I love having these shows after something happens. <laughs> Brian, it wasn't surprising. No. To us, I was a little bit shocked that, like, it just happened out of nowhere. Um, but we knew something was coming, as you stated on our previous show regarding this subject. Victoria Alonso has been... Uh, Brian, has she been fired or did she quit? All, all by all accounts, she was fired. She was okay. exited. Okay, is, the, okay. is what they're saying. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and there are a couple of things, um, Brian, that I have this been discussing with uh, Tracy and Freddie, and uh, one of the other topics of discussion for the reason for letting her go, which seems to be what they we're gonna go with this one sort of thing, right? Um, but there's some other things behind that that could potentially be another reason why she, they said, she's got to be the one. Brian, so I was having this conversation with Tracy and Freddie, and Tracy pointed out some things that I said, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. It was surrounding this diversity. Uh, uh, I guess Tracy would call it diversity campaign. Uh, over at MCU, and she was uh, the one at the front of that. And Tracy seems to believe also that it's possible that Kevin, you know, not to deal with the press and stuff, was was pushed in this direction just to avoid the negative publicity. Brian, what are your thoughts? I'm sure you pat yourself on the back when, when you heard the news. What are you... <laughs> Think about what has transpired thus far. Well, you were nice enough to put up the clip where about a month ago we were talking about how long it would be before Bob Iger demanded some changes over at Marvel for their, the slump that they're in. And I named Nate Moore and Victoria Alonso as maybe the two people you would look at. She yes. has been there for almost two decades. She's been a producer or executive producer on every single Marvel film dating back to Iron Man 1. So this is not a rookie. Yeah. Right? This is the definition of what we discussed. Box office starts to go dry. Critical reception starts to go dry. Audience satisfaction starts to go dry. Bob Iger comes back, looks around, looks at Kevin Feige and says, we got to make a change. Yeah. And he says, if it ain't going to be you, yeah. if we're not going to fire the coach, we got to fire one of the coordinators or the position coaches. That's yeah, what yeah. they did. I see three reasons why they chose Victoria Alonso. Um, and I think the one you reference is on the list. So number one is what I just said, accountability for the financial and critical performance of phase four and phase five. It has now gotten to the point where there's enough poorly received or box office disappointments relative to the standards that Disney set. This is not about profitability necessarily, although Ant-Man 3 is going to be awfully close as to whether they make money on that. Yeah. But they were making money on the other projects, but they weren't getting the buzz. They weren't getting the love. Yeah, so yeah. that's where you could see this building. So I think number one is looking around the room. Bob Iger comes back. You know, he's the he's the avenging angel and the white knight and coming to save the day. And he wants to motivate. So you yeah. motivate by getting a big name and make an example of him. So that's number one. I think number two is Victoria Alonso, one of her areas of focus where she was uh, sort of the point person was VFX. And VFX has become way too big of a talking point for Marvel for all the wrong reasons in the past three to four years. Yeah. And you can see from the reaction on social to her departure, the VFX artists are already out of the woolwork saying that toxic environment was her. She was the gatekeeper on all the shots. She wow. was the one who, if you didn't play ball with her, she blacklisted you in the VFX industry. Go Google it. It's everywhere. Wow. They're out for her. So I think that's reason number two. Reason number three is what you said. So this one gets a little bit close to the third rail, but Victoria Alonso, obviously, if you look at the, the demographics of the parliament, mm -hmm. she is the only queer female in the room, and she is very proud of that. I have no mm -hmm. problem with that. She's very outspoken about it. If you look at Disney's battles with Florida, she was on the front lines yes. of that. And yes, there is that view. If you, there is that view of, you know, 
where's the line between representation and kind of overcompensation in, you know, casting and messaging and storylines, she would conveniently be somebody in, in the midst of that. I kind of look at it as if they wanted to try to change the course of the ship for those reasons, there was air cover here from the box office disappointment and the VFX, VFX. issue to sweep her out the door and kind of get that to go with it. If now the only way we're going to know that I'd be love to hear your thoughts on this is like, do we see reversion or snapback in the, in, in the projects that haven't gone before the camera yet? Do you start to see like, quite honestly, casting demographics change? Do you start to see like, like the stuff, we saw with Korg and Thor four, we never see that again. Like I, there's things that I think you just have to watch and see to find out whether it was really her or whether they're just saying it was her because they're already showing her the door. <clears throat> I don't know the answer for that. And I don't think it's fair to say that she's the only person in the room who was championing that. Cause we kind of know at Disney that that's not about one or two people at the corporation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, me, Brian, as a fan of the the, the, the MCU and the DCU, I mean, I, me personally, Brian, all I care about is the characters and the story. That's yeah, all I care about. I don't see all this other stuff. I mean, to me, there's plenty of characters that, that, that can be well represented in the MCU. Storm, um, Black Widow, was, had, they did a fantastic job. Uh, this Jean Grey, that's just a bunch of, of characters that they can put in there. And my thing is the story has to be told in a way that there are reasons for certain situations happening that's what i care about yeah and then like you don't i mean some of our favorite discussions in the past year have been like jonathan majors as kang um tenoch huerta as namor hmm. that's not how they ethnically appear in the comics but who cares the performances are really interesting and compelling and the characters still have the spirit of what we know them to be so you know, that's, it's not about that. Yeah, yeah. Will we see a difference in some of the films or pieces of content that are gonna that haven't hit uh, or started production, Brian, um, or haven't even been written? I would think so. We see a difference, and will that difference be a better story, more of like, yo? When I saw the first three phases, I didn't care about any of that stuff. And then it just started being a little bit more blatant. And now I think they might go back to what they started with, Brian. And I think it's telling great stories and, and highlighting characters and, and, their, and their uniqueness. I don't think it will go back all the way to where it was. And I don't think it should, quite honestly. But I think where I've always drawn the distinction and I've always held the line, and it's sort of similar to what you're saying, is does the ethnicity and does the orientation, does it matter to the character as, as it's being played? Like, I think when you, when you just sort of, well, the reason why I think like Jonathan Majors works so well is it, it's not about that, if that makes sense. Like there's been nothing about his portrayals where they're kind of putting a spotlight on his race yeah. as the driving motivation of the character. It's just, he happens to be of that background and he's delivering a compelling performance embodying the character. So that to me, like that works perfectly in sort of forwarding representations, like act like you've been there, like kind of like act like you've been there before. It's not a big yeah. deal. We don't think anything of it. Yeah. We're just lost in the performance. Yeah. The reason why I always single out the something like the Korg thing to me is like that storyline was completely useless to Thor's narrative but there was an enormous amount of time paid to that aspect of Korg's character where it's like, I, the only reason this is here is for you to highlight this and push it onto me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's great. I don't have a problem with what you're saying, but like, it doesn't, I, I don't I, feel like it fits yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with where we're trying to go. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. I, I, it's a, I realize that's a delicate subject and maybe not everyone will like that I just said that, but like, that's how, that's kind of how I always distinguish it. And I kind of feel like, I don't think Disney is going to get rid of the former, like things like the majors performance. I do wonder if they're going to scrap some of the latter because they feel like it's turned off and alienated some of the audience, or maybe they feel like for 
parents who don't think that's appropriate for kids of a certain age. They're no longer taking their kid to see a certain movie. I, you know, who knows? But they, they have the numbers. They see the trends within the trends of who's mm -hmm. going and not going to see these projects. And so there's no doubt that they're going to answer to that somewhat. And I also would throw in here, you know, we, we criticize David Zasloff and Warner Brothers for really taking an ax to a lot of representation when they came in. And one of the things I predicted at the time was you look at Zaslav's background, you look at Warner Brothers boardroom. And I was like, I think you're going to see a pretty traditionalist view of the characters. And, you know, that's kind of starting to happen. Like the Superman that's being described, mm. it feels a lot like a throwback Superman. Yes. I mean, I even saw the other day, truth, justice in the American way is back as part of Superman legacy, the, lo the, the slogan, which oh. nowadays actually... You, you might get some flack for throwing that in a, a, a crowd. And the so, American way, yeah. Right. I don't know. So I'm just saying that goes to what I'm saying about they're going, if they're going in that direction, you know, and Marvel's going the other way, like, I don't know. It, it's a very interesting TBD, but I do think there's something there. We just don't know how much yet. Before we move on to another character, um, Superman Legacy can go either fantastic, Brian, in some of the things that you're saying with this Tooth Justice and American Way. It could be a vehicle to point out certain things that I think can really resonate with people. And Superman would be a, represent a representation of what we want things to be like. I don't know. Or we, or I don't know. But it can go well or it can go badly. But let's hope. But yeah. So I also think to the VFX thing had to get addressed. That's all they ever talk about. Leaving. You can't have people talking about that every movie. When was the last time in franchise work, every single movie, it's like its own subplot. Yeah. So they did have to hold someone accountable for that. And they can't have the entire VFX artist industry piping up on social every single project bad mouthing yeah. them. That can't go on. So yes. I do think that makes some sense that they would try to you know, if in their minds, cut off the head of the snake when it comes to that issue. Uh, my only disappointment, Brian, is that we should have been more convincing that it would have. We would have. We should have predicted that it was going to be her. We mentioned. <laughs> you mentioned her name. I put two names. That was she was one of them. She was yeah. one of them. But I think if we would have dissected, you blew it. You blew it. I think the other thing about this this announcement that's really significant is it goes back to the question we were asking of how long, how long. We got our answer. This this it's action quick. tells you they are concerned, legit concerned. That that's the message this really sends. Is like we can't wait five films for this. We can't wait to see how things go yeah. over the next two years. This is we need to turn things around starting now. As, I, as we've discussed, though, the only bad news with that is I don't think Guardians really three counts in that because I think it'll be fine. And you got the Marvels behind that. But I, I don't think I don't think that's the answer to your problems. <laughs> so, yeah, let's take let's talk about a good thing. John Bernthal has been announced that he's you know, he's coming back as the Punisher, which is fantastic, Brian. And and one of the things that gives me hope about this character is that John Bernthal said that he wouldn't come back if it wasn't done right. So him coming back gives me a bit of hope that uh, uh, this will be done right. Your thoughts on John Bertha coming back as Punisher? Yeah, I, I am. I'm very, I'm very pleased to see it. I was a little bit worried and I think I speculated he might not come back in part because Bernthal himself kind of is a pretty varied actor. He, he likes a lot of different things. You see him in a lot of different things, sometimes top build, sometimes he's way down the cast yeah. list. So I wasn't convinced that he would even want to kind of sign up for a long kind of run again as the character as good as he was so good to see it i also saw i think the my, my tinfoil hat is out a little bit now on daredevil because i saw like they confirmed like alakwa cox is also in born again so i no long i really don't think there is much distinction between echo the show and born again the show i think it's all just daredevil the show i think it's all 24 episodes of daredevil basically regardless of what they're going to call it mm -hmm. i wouldn't even be surprised if they just folded the whole thing together and and just made it all one because we know that cox d'onofrio 
are major players in the Echo series. And now she's confirmed to be a fairly major supporting character in Born Again. So it's like, what is the distinction? This feels like this Mandalorian is the, Echo is a prequel. Boba Fett. That's what it feels. Yeah, exactly. It feels like exactly that. So I kind of feel like now they're just building this story arc across a massive 24 episode run. Um, and, and we get Burnthal back. We won't get, I guess, no, um, uh, no care, no Karen, Karen Page, Page no Foggy Nelson. Yeah. Those two actors did not make the cut. I thought they were both pretty good, actually. In the Netflix yeah, me too. Show. Me too. too bad. Um, yeah, we don't get to see them, but they're not coming back. So I thought he was perfect as Foggy Nelson. Yeah, I thought so too. And she so. did a fantastic job as as Karen Page too. I, I don't know what happened there. I don't know what story they're trying to tell. We don't know if the characters have been cut. We know the actors have been cut. Yes. It's possible neither character is actually in the show, which would be a little weird. Yes. If we're going to spend time in the courtroom to have no Foggy Nelson yes. and no Karen Page, but we'll see. Yeah, that's going to be very disappointing if if they do recast and these dudes don't live up to that 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 role. Um, it'll be pretty disappointing. Also, they can't see now that they put Burnthal in. I'm telling you this thing has to be tvma i cannot look at bernthal doing pg stuff after the oh, work no. that he did in the in this in both daredevil and his own show the brutality was key true to the success but i'm cool with a rated r um i mean we don't have to see the gore we i mean they can do it in a way that um it doesn't have to be tvma brian Okay. Um, um, It'd have to push TV fourteen. Yes, yes. It'd have to really push yes, that. I think yes, to, yes. to make it, yeah, resonate. Brian, I, we had a discussion about Blade. Um, now, it's second to last episode. Yeah. And uh, we both we were vocal about how concerned we are about this uh, film and how it's going. Now we hear that Blade is rewriting certain things that he doesn't want. He's he's writing out Black Knight. I think we mentioned this before, Brian. If this was the era of Edgar Wright and Ed Norton, this would not be happening. So whatever plans the MCU had with Black Knight, this dude is like, it don't fit what I want. <laughs> so I don't know, Brian. There's a lot riding on this. It's the, 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 it, it, the pressure must be mounting. I hope. I don't know what's going on. Has they started filming with this yet? So why are, this is my main question. Why are they trying to go in front of the camera again in a few weeks? This thing doesn't sound close, to being close done. to ready. You got Bob Iger saying we need to slow it down. Here it is. Like, just wipe this thing back until you're actually ready. So the latest reports. So remember when they when they fired the first director and went back to went back to scratch on the script. One of the criticisms was that the script was too short. It was like ninety pages, two set pieces. Mm -hmm. Well, the latest rumor is that the the script they have now is eighty seven pages, and Black Knight's been removed. So I'm like how have we made progress and the, yeah. and the report i heard was that they basically were stripping it down to its bare bones Which... and i'm like well how much more do you want to take out of this i mean i, re I realize he's a blood-sucking creature but like we're sucking the blood out of this before it even appears like i don't i don't understand that but the black knight thing to me follow is such a it's such an indictment uh, and goes along with the criticisms we've had of these cutscenes. yeah they're the ones who were, uh, Chloe Zhao was so psyched. Oh, I got Mahershala's voice from my cutscene in Eternals. It's like, well, guess what? It's called Nowhere. And Kit Harrington's like, whoo, thank God I got that Jon Snow spinoff. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, word, word. Uh, it's, it's just crazy because I guess we were looking forward to some sort of midnight sun run. I don't know if that's even still happening. A lot of these characters, Brian, that they've tried to introduce seems to be going nowhere. Black Knight, um, Doctor Strange is what, what, what what's uh, Chloe? What's the name? Uh, the, she ended. She she uh, she was in the end credit scene of Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. Man, I don't give a damn, blam, Sam. Forget the peanut even stuff like Moon Knight, where it's like 
they set up a season two of Moon Knight, but it's not clear that like Oscar Isaac works in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that's what I mean. Like there's a lot of these like loose ends of like even stuff like Shang Chi where we know we're getting a sequel. It's like, yeah, we, we have that cutscene basically saying he's part of the Avengers, but it's like, you know, Gross. it's not we're not sold on that yet, you know. So all of this feels very jumbled. Yeah, and Brian, if you wanted Moon Knight to be part of Kang Dynasty, perhaps you had the opportunity to give us some Easter eggs in those ruins or something like that. Something. Yeah, Ramatat is sitting right there. It's like the cat. They they chose to make Ramatat one of the lead Kangs. Why was Ramatat not referenced or appearing in? I what I was hoping to see some something like that, but it never came to pass. So I don't know, Brian. This blade. This doesn't movie. sound good. No, no. no. This did. <laughs> this is scary. I'm sure Freddy is 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 calm, cool, and collected, thinking that Blade is possibly going to be a fantastic movie. But I don't know, Brian. This could be a disaster, and it's looking like one, possibly. I'm hopeful. I'm hoping, Brian, to be wrong. With yeah, this movie. so am I. I mean, they've got a great they've got a great actor, but it's like nothing else about this seems to be working. And at some point, you do have to look at like, okay, well, if he if he's at the epicenter of why it's not working. You know, do we have the right guy? Wow. The possibility, Brian, of this movie being shut down. We're, we're close to shooting, right? Two weeks away. If we hear another delay, Brian, it is possible that this movie may not happen. Not for a while. But at the same time, I'm like, I think what I will, based upon the information we have in hand, it sounds awfully risky to uh, actually start shooting scenes here. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below. Um, hit that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Jam Report. It has begun.